Welcome to my review of the Wanhao Duplicator i3 Plus. In a previous video, I reviewed the Duplicator i3 V2.1, which is the lower cost version of the Duplicator i3 series. I highly encourage you guys to see it, as I'll be building off some of the comments that I've made in that video and highlighting key differences between the Plus and the V2.1. As with any Wanhao printer, the overall product finish is extremely robust. From the materials to the user manual, everything is of the highest quality, so I have no complaints whatsoever. Although the Wanhao i3 V2.1 had simple plug-and-play connectors, the Plus took it a step further with larger ribbon cables that minimized the clutter of wiring. The power switch is still the same, and while this is totally functional, I would have appreciated an upgrade into something a bit more prominent. It's hard to reach the switch to turn on and off the printer every time, especially in an emergency situation. As for the X carriage, you can see the ribbon cable on the extruder assembly. This is a definite improvement from the V2.1 as there are fewer wires floating around and so fewer opportunities for something to go wrong. The entire system looks to be sturdily built with adequately lubricated linear bearings for smooth operation. The hotbed again is the same thing as you would find on the V2.1. It gets the job done, so not much to say here. The extruder is the same kind of deal, so it gets the job done again, but isn't anything special. Now to the input of the printer, you get the standard USB plug, but I was surprised and happy that an SD card slot was used in this machine. This means no more playing with finicky adapters to insert into your computer. I was impressed with the quality of the V2.1 manuals and this was no different for the Wanhao Duplicator i3+. Plus. Everything is laid out in easy to follow instructions so you're completely covered. Again with the Plus, you'll receive a bunch of tools including a print removal tool and a nozzle cleaner. These proved to be surprisingly useful while using the Wanhao. You only get a bit of filament though which is quite disappointing. With a relatively high-end printer like the Plus, I would expect to receive more than this little roll of filament, which doesn't even look to be enough for a sample piece. Instead, I use my crappy free white PLA that I use to test all my printers. Now let's talk about the biggest point of difference for the Plus, which is a highly integrated electrical components. Although the Wanhao V2.1 had a separate control console, the Plus eliminates that entirely means less clutter and a much more streamlined footprint for the printer. Assembly is super easy with just four screws needed to snap everything together. Another improvement on the Plus is a full-size touchscreen at the front of the printer. All the graphics are in black and white which I don't quite understand as the screen should support a color interface. Instead we're left with rather bland menus. It just seems like a wasted opportunity for Wanhao to not capitalize on the touchscreen they've already implemented. The touch sensitivity is surprisingly good. Usually with cheaper displays, the touchscreen isn't very pleasing to use, but this isn't the case at all with this printer. Menus are intuitive and give you access to a wide array of different options at the touch of your fingertips. Most menus are self-explanatory, but there are a few that are just plain weird. For example, there's a disabled drive option with a picture of a car drivetrain. This could be difficult to understand, but learning the commands shouldn't take too much time. Another useful thing I wanted to point out is that there are a bunch of pre-programmed commands that make calibration a breeze. Auto leveling, for example, isn't included with this printer, but there is a very useful setup sequence that moves the extruder for you while you complete the leveling process. This is a huge step up in terms of user experience. Leveling and loading filament used to be very tedious tasks for the Wanhao V2.1, but these programmed instructions essentially automate the process. Getting started with printing is also extremely easy. Simply insert the SD card and you gain access to the print main menu. You then pick the print file and are guided to the print page that keeps track of the process and any settings. You can change print parameters mid-print as you can with most of the printers, but I do really appreciate how everything is nicely laid out in the same menu. With lower cost printers such as the Anet A8, you would need to navigate into different menus to change these settings. My very first print was a dismal failure. PLA globbed up around the nozzle and wasn't sticking to the build tack surface as it should. To fix this, I laid out some painter's tape and started it again. I wouldn't worry too much about this issue, 
After testing out the printer, I switched to higher quality PLA and the issue went away completely. One thing I did notice about the process is that the included Van Hal version of Cura likes to make the printer spit out a bunch of filament before starting to print. This isn't a property of the machine as I switched over to normal Cura and printing just proceeded normally. Also a quick note about the Van Hal branded Cura software, I wouldn't recommend it at all as it is quite dated. Instead, I would use the latest version of Cura and set the machine up as I'll link in the description. Once the print started, it was super easy to go into the menus and change the parameters. I find this feature to be extremely useful and I'm glad that Van Hal decided to implement it. Another thing you can see is the use of continue, pause, and stop buttons. These work fabulously and I haven't noticed any layer shifts from using them. The printer worked very well in this print, even though I was using very low quality test PLA, the objects seemed to be nicely made with even extrusion. The first layer looked surprisingly good for such low quality PLA, there were however a few lines where extrusion was poor. The edges and crevices in this print looked nicely defined. You can also catch a glimpse of the pillowing that I experienced in the center valley of this print. This is simply an issue with the top layer height being too low. After changing it to 1.2mm, the issue went away completely. Given the poor PLA that I used, I was very happy with how this print turned out. Overall, the Wanha Duplicator i3 Plus is a bang for your buck at just over $500. It does suffer from a few disappointments such as the bland printer interface. These were all areas that OneHow could have capitalized on but failed to do so. The print quality is roughly the same as you would expect on a Duplicator V2.1, as these printers share the same core system. However, you do get a much better interface with the Plus as well as a smaller footprint. For me, that more than justifies the higher price of the OneHow Duplicator i3 Plus. And that's it guys, thank you very much for watching my review of the Wanha Duplicator i3 Plus. I hope that this was insightful for you. And with that said, have a great day everyone, and if you've enjoyed the video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe for more content coming soon.